a slightly calmer day for stock markets. Yesterday, some exchanges saw their steepest one-day drop since 2015. Today, a more mixed picture. In London, the stock exchange opened slightly up, but in New York, closing sharply down. That's partly because Chinese factories are slowly reopening, signaling a replenishment of global supply chains, and because fears of a truly global pandemic haven't been realized, although it's far from over. Now is the time to prepare. So we're in a phase of preparedness for a potential pandemic. So preparation is now the name of the game. In the United States, the White House asked Congress for 2.3 billion euros to prepare medical workers and to find a vaccine. Japan's preparation, staggering the daily commute. Companies and organizations, please encourage your employees with cold-like symptoms to take leave, and we ask that you promote telecommuting or even working staggered hours. But countries with major outbreaks, such as here in South Korea or in Iran and in Italy, business as usual is hard to maintain. There is, of course, an economic impact due to the suspension of activity, including for the regions directly affected, but we're ready to deal with this emergency. You'll see that we'll limit the negative impact, including the economic impact. Analysts are now not predicting a global downturn because governments are willing to step in with liquidity and lower interest rates to stimulate the economy. Now, uh, let's get some more insight on the impact of COVID-19 with Ricardo Corto. He is the China representative of Germany's Association of Supply Chain Management, Procurement and Logistics. Uh, welcome to the program, Ricardo. Uh, where do you see the biggest disruption at the moment? Well, thank you for having me first. Uh, for what we can observe, uh, the point is that more and more companies whether, which have production facilities and uh, supplying facilities over in China, uh, they see that um, right now uh, capacity figures are reopening, labor is coming slowly back to work, which means that production capacity uh, cannot reach that level that it used to have before. And taking this into consideration with the extended uh, Chinese New Year break, uh, many companies are prepared for this issue. But uh, now we have to really focus on how the next two weeks will uh, go on so that uh, production lines and supply chains can reopen and start working again as they used to before. Mm -hmm. Now, we hear of some companies uh, trying to shift their production out of China. Uh, what do you make of that? Yeah, that's true. That's also something that we uh, heard through our BME member network in China. Uh, you have to see that uh, the German companies or European companies are working very uh, close together with their Chinese supplier base and they are looking to get, uh, let's say, a mutual uh, solution for this because it's not in the interest of the Chinese supplier to destroy this relation uh, because of the coronavirus. So more and more um, those German companies which cannot uh, fulfill their demand in China are looking for alternative suppliers also from their supplier base back in Europe. That's true. And how are your member countries in particular trying to arm themselves uh, against the impact of this epidemic? Well, this is the, you have to see this on a one-on-one -on -one, uh, perspective. Uh, you cannot talk generally over the whole industry since we are representing a lot of industries. So basically, uh, more and more companies are um, focusing on their stocks, on their stock uh, issues. Um, if this stock management uh, will allow them to go on with their production capacities, then it's good. If this stock uh, for producing the materials like raw materials, components and so on, will continue to shrink, um, then uh, this will have a, for sure an impact on uh, all the further activities that the company will take. I mean, they are running into major difficulty then. Yeah, of course. Uh, this is uh, something now where our companies see that uh, risk management is getting more and more important. Analysis of this entire supply chain and analysis of the entire supply uh, issue and uh, supplier portfolio to see uh, where can we shift some issues, uh, are alternatives routes of transport an issue. Mm. So all these aspects, putting all together, 
are uh, under uh, concrete uh, evaluation and analysis also for the future to be right. even better prepared if such kind of situation should ever occur again. And Ricardo, briefly, what do you expect from authorities in Germany and on the Chinese side? Yeah, that's a good question. Thank you. I think, especially from the Chinese authorities, uh, I think transparency, keeping up transparency is crucial so that we all can uh, get an idea about the, di about the dimension that this mm. virus uh, is bringing uh, to the global impact. And furthermore, from the German authorities, also talking about the German federal government, so far we believe that uh, the risk management is quite good. But, however, uh, if this crisis will continue on having an impact, the uh, federal government should also have a look on uh, not only on the health issue, but also right. what they could do to stimulate or to protect uh, mm. the German environment in terms of economy. Ricardo Corto of Germany's Association of Supply Chain Management, Procurement and Logistics, thank you for talking to DW. Now, Vietnam's Thank textile you. sector could suffer as a result of the new coronavirus. Producers are forecasting a severe shortage of materials during the second quarter of the year. Companies say they have sufficient materials until the end of the first quarter, but production beyond that could be hampered by difficulties importing from key suppliers in China, Japan and South Korea. China provides more than half the materials for Vietnam's garment industry. Textiles represent Vietnam's third biggest export earner after smartphones and electronics. U.S. President Donald Trump is wrapping up his 